everyone. Welcome to Toy Break episode 279. I'm Aileen. I'm George. And I'm still Ben. <laughs> In case you're wondering, Toy Break is your weekly internet show featuring news and reviews all about the wonderful world of toys, including but not limited to designer vinyl, plush, action figures, collectibles, interviews, artists, anything we can bring you in said wonderful world of toys. That's what we do. Let's start as we always do by thanking our site sponsors like 3D Retro. Happy Panda Toys. Victory Deluxe. Rombies. Tomonosuke. Art Attack Toys. Suburban Vinyl. Outsmart Originals. Vinyl Riot. Dragatomi. Button Lab. Super Power Collectibles. And last but never least, DKE Toys. We also have some donations to thank people for. Hit it. We have John from Florida, Shannon from Oklahoma, Matt from California, Emil from California, Thomas from New Mexico, Garrett from Texas, DonkeyJawProjects.com from Connecticut, and Joseph from North Dakota. All right, Idaho. No. You guys, no, 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 no. North, North Dakota. Dakota. Let's celebrate that. Yay, Yay North Dakota. North Dakota. Is that the first one from North Dakota? Yeah. Sweet. Putting it on the map. Put it on the map. That makes you so happy. I know. How many do we have left? Can't be many. A handful. A mere handful. A mere. Beautiful. Speaking of mere handfuls, yes. not a good segue. Would you like to tell us about the contest, George? <laughs> Brobo Mumo contest. Brobo Mumo. From Brobo.com. To enter, just head over to the forum at toybreak.com and post a picture of your favorite monster. That's it. Easy. Deadline, October 16th. You Easy could, contest. You could Do draw, it. you could take a picture, you could, whatever. Take a picture of your favorite monster. And like a toy. It. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we or find you, your monster. Maybe your mom's dressed up as Frankenstein. Maybe your Take uncle touched picture. you when you were a kid. Whoa! What? Ooh, come on. Let's get into some news. You said you wouldn't even mention that to anyone. <laughs> All right. First up, this is very exciting. It's a designer wallet Ooh. from Nathan Hamill and Dino Mighty. I heard of them. So as you can see, Nathan's awesome. Um, Nirvana inspired yes. wallet design. Uh, he needs 30 backers within 30 days. Uh, the wallets are $15 each. He also really needs a new wallet himself and would like to have one of these. Well, maybe he could buy one on here. It's so only $15. Cheapskate. If he could help, well, it won't get made unless they get 30 backers. Right. He should buy 30 wallets. So the one wears out. So if you go to Dino Mighty, click the link in the show notes at toybreak.com, you'll go right to the wallet and uh, go back it. It's 15 bucks. Yeah. It's a cool wallet. Is this Kickstarter or is this some other thing? No, it's Dino no. Mighty. They need 30 people to commit to buying it before they'll actually make it. Huh. Dino Mighty. Do it. 15 bucks. Nathan needs a wallet, you guys. Oh How about some New York Comic Con news? Let's hear it. There's so much right around the corner. Okay, so first up, <sighs> let's see if we can get through some of this. Uh, okay. Custom King Nagora. This is by Mark Nagata of Max Toy Company. Mm -hmm. It's a one-off exclusive King Nagora with beautiful red and orange <laughs> Blue, red, orange, and blue paint scheme. It's $175 exclusively at Suburban Vinyl Booth 208, which is part of the Tenacious Co Toys Collective. I have a question. Only one? Can there's you one. call something an exclusive if there's only one? No, there's it's only just a one? custom. I report news. I'm calling bunk. Next. Bunk. I mean, it's probably cool, but you can't call it an exclusive. It's just, here's one. It's a custom someone made. <laughs> Mountain Dew Bunny Boom Boom. Yeah. You just said those words. <laughs> By Jay Fury, exclusive Mountain Dew colorway of these four inch tall, six inch wide resin figures, limited to 10 pieces. Now that's an exclusive. <laughs> and uh, it's $65, available at the Suburban Vinyl Booth 208 as part of the Tenacious Collective. Again, kind of just a run of customs. 10? That's still, no, 10's right. an what exclusive. What else is happening? Josh? Tuts Mini Cracked Cats by Argonaut Resins. These exclusive resin figures are limited to 12 pieces. <laughs> Bam. With three glow-in-the-dark chase pieces exclusively of all Suburban Vinyl Booth number 208. Small Part resin. of the Tenacious Collective. Yeah. Small resin runs. 
How about that for exclusive? Sure. Teal Philip the Bunny. This is by Juan Munez and Jay Fury. It's a three inch clear teal resin figure, limited to 10 pieces, $30 each. Uh, Juan is the in-house artist for this season's The Ultimate Fighter 18 house, and will be signing at their booth on Friday, October 11th from two to three with prints and art available throughout the con. Uh, all of that will be at Suburban Vinyl, booth 208, part of the Tenacious Collective. Juan is also the artist of the month for the September issue of uh, Divulge Magazine. Never well, heard of it. Look at that. There you go. What? <laughs> Download your copy at Divulge.com. Only one dollar. Is it Divulge.com? Divulge, Divulge Magazine.com. Magazine. There you go. Brand new site. Lovely. Thank you. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Who's mm -hmm. saying this one? Me? Anyway. Minions of Darkness. Ben's saying this one. All right. It had minions in it. This is also by Suburban Vinyl and Scott... Kenbrew? Kenbrew. Kenbrew. Uh, also known as Forces of Dorkness. Uh, two editions of The Minions of Dorkness will be available at the Suburban Vinyl booth number 208. Each version is limited to only 10 pieces. Sets of each head sculpts, sculpt plus two mystery colors for each sculpt. Heads and tentacles are interchangeable using a magnet system. Ooh, magnets. Mm -hmm. Uh, these five-inch figures will be also thirty dollars and are not blind box, so you can pick your favorite colors and mix and match and all that good stuff. Nice. Oh, I got this, guys. All right, do it. The E Walking Dead. These are customs by uh, Killer Bootlegs. They are flocked resin action figures with hand-sewn cloaks. They are limited to fifty copies on card backs, designed by Luke Gates. They're eighty dollars at Tenacious Toys, New York Comic Con booth two. Oh, eight. Is, is that better? Does 50? New York Comic 50. Con have any other booths? No, they, no that's right. Is, is, is there only Atlanta. booth 208? Nobody else is promoting their are stuff. Gonna, are you going to get a mule for that one? Cool. I have situations oh. arranged. Oh, my. Situ <laughs> situations. Mostly because Killer Bootlegs is amazing. Okay. And nice and awesome. How about the Clutter Calavera Rita? Calavera. 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 Yeah. By the Beast Brothers. These five inch <laughs> pink Sofubi Calaverettis. Ferrettias? Ferrettas? I'm glad I'm not reading this. <laughs> we'll debut at Clutter's New York Comic Con booth 50? Booth 50. I'm not 100% sure that I'm I that I'm not 100% sure right. that that's correct. Clutter, Clutter's booth. Check the Clutter's, check out Clutter's booth. It's probably somewhere near Tenacious Toys booth 208. It might so be 250. Check near that. Uh, it's limited <laughs> to only 30 pieces. They are $70 each. The release will coincide with a signing by Carlos East of the Beast Brothers on Friday, October 11th at noon. So See? find that booth before then. Check the booth number in the show notes. That's See, perfect. add another booth. Can't get, can't, can't get the find. Can't find the booth number. What? What? Oh, they're, 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 what? They're, 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 and now they're, they're. a moment with Ben. <laughs> <laughs> the Fury Cup. Furry Cup. Furry or Fury? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> this Jay is a furry? mess. The Furry this Cup by Clutter and Matt Jonas. It's Matt Jonas. Ooh. A special edition of Lunartic in a Cup of Tea, exclusively available in the U.S. from Clutter Magazine, debuting at New York Comic Con, simultaneous to the U.K. online release from Matt Jones himself. This pristine 2.5-inch white teacup has been flocked and houses a vinyl Lunartic in Clutter's signature pink. Pinky Limited up. to 200 signed and numbered pieces, 100 in each country, so 100 for U.S. at New York Comic Con, 100 for Matt to release online in the U.K., it's $30 U.S., £20 U.K., releasing at 10 a.m. on Friday, October 11th at Clutter's New York Comic Con booth. Five oh, oh, it's 504. Mm, there Clutter's you go. Booth. 504. And uh, that would be 3 p.m. GMT at Lunartic.com for the U.K. market. I think someone needs to put, like, an online dictionary up about, like, what the definition of words. Huh? Like, for our scene. They have scene. that. It's called Mary, Mary No, Webster. no, like, okay, oh. let's look up the word exclusive. Doesn't Vinyl Creep have that? <laughs> let's look up the word... <laughs> Nothing. Forget it. <laughs> I'm done ranting. Den Boo and Rexy by Lisa Sore. <laughs> yeah. I give up. I quit this bitch. <laughs> by Lisa Sar. Lisa Sar. It's like a dinosaur. Right. Three versions Lisa. of this 5.25 inch hand crocheted Den Boo designed by Abe Lincoln. Am I saying real words? Yes. <laughs> designed by Abe Lincoln Jr. will be available including I Agore You Den Boo, Damaged Goods Den Boo, and Dapper Den Boo. Each limited to six pieces for $45 each. 4.25 inch Rex the Dinosaur will be available for $40. Both available exclusively at the My Plastic Art booth, number 113. Hey, there you go. If you, showed this show, if you showed this show to a random person on, uh, in the world, like, uh -huh. let's just take like your aunt. We'll bring it to your aunt and say, hey, watch this. Do you have an aunt? I don't yeah, know. I have an aunt. I would yeah, imagine. I have an aunt. Sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, I know his mom. I don't know his aunt. She'd never you can take it to this. one of my aunts. That's fine. But like, you would play this, and they would just be like, "Are you speaking a language? What are you just English? About? What are you? What are you saying? What are those words? Well, don't you know what a denbu is? Denbu. Denbu. Sure. Denbu by Zuba by Zuba Zuba. Zuba Zuba. Jim Jimmy Jim 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 Bob. Exclusively available. Exclusive for New York. Also available in the UK. Star Wars inspired <laughs> Zora by Frombies. You can check out these teaser images for two mm. new Star Wars inspired resin figures. The six inch tall Darth Zora and the nine inch sure. tall S2B2 as well as Chosen Zora, DJ Zora, and Robo Zora. Yeah. Pieces with a huge surprise. And that, that last one, Robo Zora has a huge surprise that comes along with them. Or maybe all three of those do. And uh, there will also be two new Mechipang versions, sure Astro and Toxic, as well as new limited edition pins featuring characters such as... Mm-hmm, go for it. Mummy Kami, Vampire SB, Cupcake Kami, and Franken Kami. Kami, like sure for communist? Don't think so. <laughs> All available at Frombie's booth 609 at New York Comic Con. I want my Robozora Mechipang tell, Domo Kumi Kami. Tell us about the neck. <laughs> How about the White Star Edition Outer Space Men by the Four Horsemen? These sets have dropped in price, and the figures will be each sold separately. Yeah, Ooh, that's awesome. Nice for Wave Six and Seven. Uh, they will be thirty-five dollars each, and individual figures range. What? Wave, wave six, six and Seven and will seven be thirty-five dollars each, and individual figures range from eleven dollars to sixteen dollars, depending on the guy. Yes. They will be available at the O'Neill Design booth for a couple of hours on Saturday, and up for sale on StoreHorseman.com the following Monday. Nice. Right that's after the awesome. convention. Beautiful. So you could just buy the one guy that you're like, that's my favorite, and I, or I don't have thirty five dollars to spend. Yeah, on like this. Oh, I, don't I have want the eleven. Whole set, but here's eleven bucks. I, still I want to buy that. something. Isn't that yeah. great? And this white star set, as much as I like all the outer space men, it's my favorite. This color, this color. It's like Arctic. Was that the one? Oh, at I love it. San Diego Comic Con too. They, it was like blue and white. Yeah, it's blue and blue white. Blue and white, but nice. I think it's the next yes. figure in line, like the next oh, set. I'll oh, have to check that. They're out. so good. So good. Let's open some wine box and stop saying silly words. Do you guys know what time it is? Time box time! Time box! Silly word. Give me some time box! Yay, thank you, Ben. All right, what do we want? Uh, I clearly know what I need. So today we have uh, Doctor Who. This is from, oh, Titan's Vinyl Figures. It's not Underground Toys. Hmm. I'm so weirded out by that. Titan Merchant is what? Why Underground Toys? They make all the Doctor Who stuff. Oh, I see. Um, um, this is Titan's Vinyl Figures. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Matt Jones. Yeah, right here. He uh, did the designs for a lot of this. Like, he kind of helped Matt come Jonas. up with it. Just Cur- kidding. It says curated by curated That's awesome. Minartic, but I'm pretty sure he did a lot of the designs for it. All right, so, oh, man, there's some really good ones in here. I definitely, the Adipose is my number one, but number two is Vashta Narada. I'll just go for it again. Vashta, it's the skeleton <laughs> in the suit with the, in the library. In the, you know what I'm talking I about. I just want any of the Daleks. You don't want the Cyberman leader? Like he's a he's a robot. You love robots. I want the Adipose. I don't care about Not any a weeping of the other angel? ones. No, I just want the Adipose. Rip, rip, rip. Nobody wants a Tardis. Nope. Nah. Or do they make too many of those things? I'll no, take a Tardis, but I like. I just want the Adipose. Never mind. I got a Tardis. I can feel it. I can already feel it through the plastic. Does it have a thing? A rippy thing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here, Ben. I'll trade you. I'll tra- oh. Oh, you you'll trade him. I'll Ooh. trade you. I'll just stick with my Cyberman. Nice. Hey, I got a turd. I got a Dalek. Yay. Or a Dalek. Or a Dalek. Dalek. Yeah, Dalek fit in one of these tiny packages? How'd they get him in there? I don't know. <laughs> Magic. Dude, this thing's squishy. It is kind of squishy. Oh, I actually like that. It's neat. I gotta put it together. It doesn't really, it's really like anything. You got a Cyberman with sure does Cyberman look with, like with a, tall, a brain. Sure does look like a tall dunny with a different head. This doesn't. No, it's that's a cute awesome. little police box. Nope. Is it like a rule now that if you make a if you make a new blind box series, you have to steal the dunny shape and then use it? Hey, ah, I see. It's a rule. It's a law. Like they even put like the cut where the hand is, but like didn't articulate. But it doesn't articulate. Really? It's got the key arm with the cut, but it doesn't have the. That's weird. Mine doesn't do anything. It's just a TARDIS. This is the coolest piece that we got out of the set so far. I wanted an adipose. They're little fat guys. They're made of fat. They're like hee hee. Did I, am I and the adipose right? doesn't look like a ripoff yeah. dunny either. That's what's cool about it. Nope. Oh. Except that that one went down. Oh no! Let's get original with our shapes, shall we? The Dalek is confusing, Ben. I actually, what do you think? I mean, the paint down here, it doesn't have much, but around the light is a little bit messy, but. This hand looks a little short for a stormtrooper. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of short looking. Oh, wait. Does that go up here? 
No, the egg beater goes. The paint roller thing goes. Yeah, there you go. Oh. I was no, looking that at doesn't. The, I was looking at the that's image. That's not how it goes. Yeah, I was just seeing if it looked better. It doesn't. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. There you go. How will he exterminate? Exterminate. There you go. It's cool that it's like it becomes articulated because it's just a little ball socket thing. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Not very, uh, not like very that? stylized. That's good. Like, How do you stylize a Dalek? They already have that fat body shape. Like, yeah, it's already a weird shape, like, and it's, it's a very iconic just like, shape. Here's a Dalek. But because it's a different sculpt, they they have oh, three look. different versions that you can get. Look, Ooh. that's articulated too. That's fun. Is this is the center body articulated? Like the center? No, no, no because. They might be able to use the bottom. No, I no, guess they it's can't. Just a new but they have one, two, three different colors of it. So I guess it makes sense for the different. They have sculpt. a lot of different. This is nice because because of the shape and because that they were you know the thing is that's where the open point is for mm -hmm. the two things. There's no like, it's like a nice solid oh, yeah. like yeah. hidden well. Oh, that's a Doctor Who logo and everything. They could have done it on this too. They could have. Because this is also a separate point. It's fine. So they could have cast like that. You're not going to look at the bottom of that. I know, but it's just nice to get rid of that. Oh yeah. Like you don't have that yeah. on there. Yeah. It's cool. Or you never pick it up, and it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Tardis is the best. Wow, All you right. can actually read the little police box sign too. Robot. Pull the robot. Trash. 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 Oh, a thing. Trash. Oh, instructions for help. <laughs> put your dollar together. <laughs> if the head sticks, just put it in some water. <laughs> Hot H2O, it says. Hot H2O. It's actually awesome. For 30 All seconds. Right. Wow. Let's do some reviews. Let's do it. Okay. Up first yeah. is an alien thing. And up second and up third. Go. My Little <laughs> Pony Pop by Pop. Funko. I needed this. And you got ah! it. Got it. It's Twilight Sparkle! <laughs> Jump for your lives, Pony Lords. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, it's pop vinyl. Here we go. How's the quality? It's Funko. It's awful, as usual. Me. But you know, I, I'm not going to complain about this because I know as soon as they start releasing the Back to the Future ones, just like they released the Despicable Me ones, and the Simpson ones, I was like, oh, "Did you I see need them all. that they're doing Back to the Future as action figures, like the '70s, like the like the Kenner, Kenner? alien reaction figures?" No. Super Seven has partnered <gasps> up with Funko. You're gonna have to buy it. And they're doing Back to the Future action figures that look like they came out in the '70s, the way Star Wars figures looked. Oh, great! Now he's gonna be talking about that until they come out. I think, I think you're gonna pass out. <laughs> All right, so we've had Pop on before. This one's actually kind of... I like the way they did her hair because it hangs... It's got an undercut. Like, it hangs over her, her head, her mane. How so many I different... I thought it was a cute thing. So right now it looks like there are seven different ones. Oh, There's, okay. But they won't write Derpy. It just says I heart, and it's got Derpy's face. Oh, I see. But it's Derpy, Fluttershy, Pinkie Pie, Rainbow Dash, DJ Pony, Twilight Sparkle, and Dr. Hooves. Dr. Hooves. They're nice. cute. I, certain figures really lend themselves to the Pop vinyl. I think these ones lend themselves very well. Minions are super cute in pop vinyl. Yeah, they Muppets are. Muppets are super cute. Like, there's certain characters that just really... Here, you can have that. That's for your present. There's certain <laughs> characters that just really work. Awesome. Very cool. All right. It's Funko quality. You it's know what that means if you watch the show. It's got some good weight to it. It's a lot of uh, PVC. A lot of hard PVC. Can I little, should I get this tattoo? Sure. <laughs> on your butt? A cutie mark. Will you get it on I your need butt? A, yeah. All a right. cutie mark goes on your flank. Get it. <laughs> little cutie mark on the butt. <laughs> All right, so up next we have Art Passes. Ooh. This is like the Matt Jones episode. It's the Matt Jones episode. This is the Lunartic episode. Mm -hmm. right? uh, so these are from Lunartic. This is Series 5. Wow. Uh, we've had these on the show before, but this series... I can't believe they're up to Series 5 already. That's crazy. Features artists Jim Woodring, Matt Jones, a.k.a. Lunartic, Simone Legno, John Ooh. Bergerman, Sarah and Den Billy, Pablo Lentil? Lent Lentil, I think. I think. Sure. Unplugged and Jeff Lamb. Now Simone Legno, like, that's Tokidoki, isn't that it? That is mm -hmm. the create the artist behind Tokidoki. Interesting. And these are uh, three pounds each at Lunartic.com. I don't feel uh, that heavy. And, yeah. Uh, uh, I'd maybe give him like <laughs> so yeah. six, three, maybe three ounces. Yeah, not two ounces. Not three pounds. Jeez. In case you haven't seen, so I've got Jim Woodring. 
Right here. And I have, of course, John Bergerman. Bergerman. Matt Jones. Because it's filled with little teacups. So what they are is they oh, come the on. Drink. Okay. So they come on these little uh, plastic bits. They're they're a nice vinyl. Uh, they're kind of like little wallets, and you punch them out. I actually might punch this one out because I think it's really cute. They're made for um, like passes, aren't they? Yeah. So here's what you do. Gonna do it. I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. So you just pull. Should I do it's it too, all or perfect. We should give one away. We can give some away, but I kind of think this one's cute for Matt, so I want to show everybody how it works. I kept one from the last time works. he sent them in for us. I still have my Suck Lord one. I still well, have, I one, still have from... one too, and I... Oh, good. What was the one I kept? Oh, it was the one, the guy that did the art for UID. Um, so then it folds into a little wallet type thing, a little pass thing. So people who have public transportation use uh, Metro Passes, mm -hmm. and if you get them next to your other cards, sometimes the, the bar wears off. So this he kind of made this to protect your... Metro Pass. Metro Pass or Tube Pass, whatever kind of uh, mass transit pass you have slides in there. Well, we in LA don't really have public transportation, so Not we yet. don't have passes for anything. But I found that mine that I kept, that I use all the time in my purse, actually is fabulous for keeping business cards. Hmm. So I keep business cards. Or you could put your, your police badge and be like, that's, don't do that's that me. Don't do that unless you're an actual police officer. Um, all right, so I'm gonna give away the Jim Woodring one. Um, do you want to give that one away too, or do you want, or did you want any of these? No, no, no. Let's give away the. Let's give away uh, both of them too. Bergerman, Bergerman, and Jim Woodring. How are we um, doing this? Just through the um, October Toys Forum, I guess. Just you know, the first person that says they want it. Uh, the forum? Limit one e one per person. One, one per person, and also. Uh, I'm going to limit this one to the U.S. because if you're in the U.K., you have easier access to get these because these yes. are a U.K. item. So Good you idea. should go support your local store in the U.K. that's selling these anyway because these are, you know, they're up to Series 5. Obviously, they're doing well. Keep going. So the first person in the forum. First person on the forum that's under the show notes for this episode. 279. Is, um, that just says they want it. They can. I'll send it to them. Uh, two Do they have them. to say which one they want? Yeah, let me know which okay. one you want. So your choice is Jim Woodwing. Or John Bergerman. Done. Done. Boom. Easy, easy. Sharing the love, but you can't have the Matt Jones because I'm keeping it because look at how cute it is. And that's octobertoys.com slash forum. Cute. You can get to it through the toy break page, too. You can. All right. How about those? What are these pieces of junk? Ch -ch -ch Chip and Dale. Rescue Rangers. Ch -ch -ch Chip and Dale. They're no strangers. Meh. Look at them. It's Chip and Dale as Ewoks. <laughs> from Disney. Oh, oh Disney. So are you going to separate them or are you going to keep them together? I haven't decided yet because they're, they're real cute together. What do you guys think? Should I separate them? Hey. Hey. Oh, the no. scissors are out. They what are out. What if I lose one of them and then I'm like, oh, I only have Chip or I only have Dale. Oh, man. They knocked our noses together. All right. So these are plush Chip and Dale. They're dressed as Ewoks. There's not much more to say about them. They're super soft. Um, the only thing that's kind of a drawback is they're twenty eight dollars. Oof! Uh, but you get two figures for twenty eight bucks. That's twenty eight dollars. Fourteen dollars for a mass each. produced Disney item. Now I don't. I think you can only get these in the parks. I haven't checked the Disney store. What's it say on here? Disney, Disney parks. parks. Disney Parks original. So you got to go to a Disney Park mm. or find somebody to grab one for you. We can't pull that tag off. And these tags. Disney theme park merchandise. I kind of went nuts when I saw these. I was like, "Ha ha, you walks." Um, I think they're adorable. I got so, little fuzzy tails. Oh, yeah, look at that. Well, look, if you like them, then it's totally worth the 28 bucks. See, uh, the problem is, it's not a question for me. It's Ewoks <laughs> and Chippendale, which are two of my favorite Disney characters. Ch -ch -ch I got my pictures with both of them. At... Hey, look, we're showing them now. There's a picture of you with Chip, and there's a picture of you with Dale. We were eating uh... at the character breakfast at Storytellers. <laughs> Sometimes you hang out with Chip and uh -huh, Dale. I made you put silly pictures in the show. <laughs> <laughs> Except you do the editing, so maybe you didn't put them up, and maybe you just put up a picture of me with Winnie the Pooh. Who knows? <laughs> oh. <laughs> George with Winnie the Pooh. Let's put it at that one. <laughs> so I knew that I had to have these. What, do you guys care about these? Do you think they're cute? They're great. Do you, Would you even notice them? Um... I, I think they're both awesome. I, I'm I'm a fan of Jim and Dale. Who do you like better? Dale. <laughs> you had an answer. <laughs> he's got a big red nose. I would probably say if I saw them at the park, I'd probably think, like, I wonder if Aileen has these. Right. All right, let's go ahead. Let's do it. Uh-oh. Yes. Surgery. Cut the cord. Oh, They were no. meant to be free. They, they weren't are. meant to have they're their meant hands to be free. tied. Look, Come on. Look how much better that is. I'm running away. Forever. 
I'll follow you. No, don't follow. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Right. How about that box down by Ooh, your feetsies? Box. We don't know what's in this yet. Look, Ooh. see, Surprises. we got this special I'm box. Put these guys right there. The we box. Keep there. What's in the box? What's in the box? I actually know what's in the box. You do? Right. Yeah. Why don't you start saying? Because they did send notes. All right. These are the Walking Dud. <laughs> so we have we have words. yet to see that this is created and originally sculpted by Adam Smith, who is a co-owner of Truecast Studio. Mm. Ultraviolence sculpting by Jason Fraley. Production by Josh Edwards of Truecast Studio, and collaboration and promotion by the God Beast, Ooh. who you've definitely heard us talking about now, before. Here's a note: if you haven't seen Bubble the, Wrap. the video on Truecast, <laughs> the studio that did this, um, you should look it up on Vimeo, I believe. Link in the show notes. There you go. Link in the show notes. And watch. go ahead and watch the video. Is there anything in this box? It's just there. bubble wrap. Yay, they sent this bubble wrap. Give one of those to Ben. Oh, that's good. No, he's going to sit there and pop it. Oh. So we're going to pull this guy out first. Whoa. What? Wait, there's three, and we, there's different yeah. sizes. Yeah. Okay, there's three different sizes. <laughs> okay. Oh. Here's notes, but you have all these notes, right? I think I have all these. Yeah, I have all these notes. Yeah, you get that one. I'm going to hold this it's guy. it's good to have Yay. more notes, and on fluorescent green paper. Wow. <gasps> All right, this is the Walking Dead mini. Holy crumb. I'm going to... Yeah, you do this because I know you off. like to keep staples, so I'm going to let you open it. I don't and, keep the staples. No, you keep the headers, <laughs> and I just rip things open because I'll just be like, I want the toy. All right, so here we have three different sizes of the Walking Dead. This includes a, a two-inch mini rubber figure. That one goes for $15. There's the, um, the four-inch mini articulated rubber figure. It has four points of articulation, including the head, waist, and both arms. That one, uh, whether it's unpainted or painted, goes between $35 and $75. And then we've also got the full-size seven-inch rubber figure, which features five points of articulation, the tongue mm. being the fifth point, And it goes unpainted to painted, again, between mm. $75 and $150. Whoa! Whoa. Dude. Brains. Brains. Oh, no. Brains. <laughs> Brains. 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 Oh, Brains. 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 They're kind of squishy, and like you're not afraid to like bend the ears, which are like you just play with it, and it makes you want to play with it. Yeah, there's just oh something about God, these, dude. Oh wow. Uh, we should also mention that the Walking Dead parts are fully interchangeable and compatible with uh, the same uh, production size characters. These are amazing, dude. These are so well made. That one, look how rubbery it is. I want to see the tongue articulation. It is. Look. Oh. Look. It can turn. Uh, 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 you can't. You can't really see it, but it's amazing. <laughs> Holy crap! Hold that one. What? Wow. What have these guys done before? Truecast has done several things before, and Godbeast. Godbeast does a ton of work in the the toy industry. Look at these. These are just so freaking awesome like everything just look at him he's got crossed eyes oh and look at the cross hatching and the sculpting like it makes for a really textured the sculpting fabric amazing on these oh my it's goodness. really cool like look at the back of his head like look at all that little like oh the skin like stretchy, tearing away skin like look at how cool it is now you should also mention this um this uh is the rudy garcia companion walking dead the head <laughs> look at his hand when you're walking him Dragging. <laughs> Dragging. <laughs> Look at that. These are crazy. It's all like... The detail is so well, and the paint is really amazing. Well, I mean, look... Dude. Get, uh, <laughs> these are amazing. These are fantastic. You guys did an amazing job, and everybody, if you love figures. zombie figures... How much are these? Uh, well, if you were listening before... I wasn't. The small one... The two-inch one, they're the sort of like OMFG muscle size. Those ones are 15, uh, I believe, unpainted. Okay. And then the larger four-inch ones, if you get them unpainted at 35, and then there's two two levels of painted all the way up to $75. And then the seven-inch goes for between 75 and 150. 
Dude, this what this is the four inch size? I believe, yeah. Well, that's not two inch, so and it would definitely is, be four inch. And this is seventy five bucks painted or one hundred fifty, depending. There, on there's the level another of paint. level. There was like a dude, a fifty or something in a seventy five. This is, these are incredible. Look, you take the fat guy's head and put on the little body. He's even cooler. <laughs> so obviously the parts are interchangeable, which is really cool. Now, if you want to get some Walking Dead's yourself, which uh, from the moments we've been playing with them, I highly recommend you do. They're going to be debuting at New York Comic Con at the O'Neill Design booth. Uh, watch the O'Neill Design page and watch their page and Facebook and all those things for what time they will be there. Dude, these things Or are just go to O'Neill and be like, hey, when can I get at my Walking Dead? These are incredible. I had no idea what a Walking Dead was going to be, and these I'm so blown away. Awesome. Oh, it's like creepy feeling, Look at too. This, like, articulation in these things, too. It's weird. It doesn't have much of a smell, but if you get really close, it smells like like my great uncle's house. What was my great uncle doing that smelled like this? Peanut butter. Walking dud. There's a little bit of a peanut butter smell. Maybe it's peanut butter because they did always have candy out. <laughs> you know what's nice is they're cast in a translucent red for most of it. So if any paint does rub off, it ends up just looking like blood. Although we have been assured by the creators that the paint apparently adheres very well. And so far I haven't seen a single bit fleck or flake or even get marred. Yeah, no, I mean, and I'm... Although I don't know if I'd notice because it's a zombie. <laughs> now, are these limited in numbers or... I, I don't have information on if they're limited in numbers, although I'm sure that they're not going to make Look at thousands that. of them. Oh. I mean, they're casting these themselves, so they're not going to, you know... That's amazing. I'm sure they are limited to some degree. This is crazy. Crazy good? Crazy amazing. Crazy like a fox? Dude. Ooh. You love them, George? I don't even... So much work goes into this. How do you even do this? Well, that's why they're $75. Look at this. Yeah, the tongue. What? Like, th those are all separate pieces. I didn't even like, really look. It's glued in. Look at the roof of the mouth is super sculpted. Look at that. Like the there's an uvula. Yeah. No. Nah. There's an uvula. Who if, sculpted these again? The sculpting's incredible on this. Uh, the original sculpt was from Adam Smith, and the ultra violence sculpting was by Jason Fraley. Rock and roll, dude. These um, are so fun. I would just say. And this one doesn't. This one doesn't have paint. This is cast in these colors. So that one's a seventy-five dollar. This is incredible. One, and then there's. Uh, higher prices for the painted version i believe well what i would say is that anybody that you know the first inclination that you get is like why are these so expensive for a seven inch figure i don't think that at all they i'm sure there's a lot of people out there that probably are thinking like wow it's like oh, over oh, oh, over 75 dollars you know that rudy painted this these are great the just the detail in this i mean this is what makes a figure great but you know it's like the detail in the time is totally worth the cost you know, and it's it's a great job. I mean, they did an amazing job. And just the dynamic motion that they put into the sculpt. I mean, they're not just static figures that, you know, they 3D modeled and put out, and then it's just a little thing standing there that's symmetrical. There's, like, the fingers are curled, and the hand is back, and, and like, the, look at stand, the feet are stand fine. turned towards each other. And This I guy only has four little, fingers. These little ones are incredible. Look at this hand. Even the just... Just look at the hand. Do you see that catch? Nice catch. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> brains? Yeah. Oh, he's trying look to get his brains. Like... So that's probably unpainted. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Even that little eyeball is glued in there. That table is not straight. And because it's rubbery, you can like pull open oh. the eye. <gasps> the eye comes out. <gasps> what? No. Get out of town. So it's technically even the eyes articulated because you could be like... You could put it back in at any angle. Squish it around any angle. That's amazing. Dude. That's brilliant. See, it's the details. It's the tiny details. It's an actual eye socket. They made an actual eye socket. So now, okay, so this is a good good segue into our next... Oh my god. Our incredible. next segment. So while we play with these, can shall we talk about our next bit of information let's do that george would you like to introduce this i don't remember how these went when i can't when we got them. It, you put them however you want them to be they don't have to go in a specific the fat dude i like the way you had it it was cute he had that head so 
So much fun. All right, so you may remember a while ago, uh, goodness, I can't even remember what episode, uh, we were talking about a small little rubbery type figure that George said, oh, I wouldn't necessarily open that. It's got mercury in it. And some things happened online. Some people said some things. Uh, we wanted to get to the bottom of that particular uh, issue. So we were talking to Aaron from Improbable Cast. Ah, yes. Who is our, our uh, casting and molding and everything guru. You can talk to him on our forum at October Toys. He is happy to answer your, your molding and sculpting questions. But uh, we got together with him and we sent one of those pieces to a laboratory to be tested for mercury. And uh, Aaron was kind enough to record. Uh, this is a very, it's, it's a little long, it's about 12 minutes, but it's very informative uh, information about those pieces and about mercury content of toys in general, which is very important, not just for the hobbyists who are, who are making this stuff, you know, at home, but also for consumers who are buying it. So more information, the more you know. Here we go. Aaron, Listen take it away. Hi there, uh, this is Aaron from Improbable Cast. Um, you might remember me from such Toy Break episodes as episode 212, Trombone Service, episode 258, This Belongs in a Museum, uh, one of the segments from the 24-hour Toy Break 2013, and that outtake segment where I say the word butthole. George and Aileen asked me to put together a video um, for them and for everybody, just so we can sort of get to the bottom of um, the PC Flex uh, casting material issue. I thought this was kind of a no-brainer, but apparently it's still a sort of lightning rod for controversy um, in terms of whether or not the material is safe or uh, if we should be using it. And there's been a lot of sort of accusations. Yes, it's safe. No, it's not. I can do what I want. You can't tell me what to do. Uh, back and forth. Um, so I wanted to sort of have the experts weigh in and really get everybody on the same page in terms of the information that we have. So one of the first stops I made um, trying to get all this information together was I actually went directly to the manufacturer. This particular material is made by a company called Polytech, which is out in Pennsylvania. And I called them directly and talked to one of their chemists and sort of gave her the lowdown on what was happening. And I said, hey, you know, here's what people are using this product for. They're essentially making uh, consumer products with it and she said do you mean prototypes and I said no they're actual products and she said well you know that's that's not something that we would ever recommend this product for that's not what it's intended for and so I said okay well you know what is it designed for like why do you even make it and um, she said well it's it's really for uh, prototypes only it comes in a bunch of different hardnesses and those are used to simulate the different hardnesses of production rubbers that would be used for uh, whatever, rollers or uh, little squishy wheels and stuff like that. The other thing that she said was um, that because the mercury that's in it is used as a catalyst, or the mercury compound that's in it is used as a catalyst, it doesn't get changed at all. It's still present in its original form, even after the whole curing reaction takes place. And chemically, there's nothing uh, sort of keeping it in one place. It's not like in a ball in the middle. Um, it's sort of evenly distributed throughout the piece, including the surface. I took a sample. Uh, I mailed it to a testing laboratory, um, an ASTM certified laboratory that does consumer product safety testing for all kinds of companies, uh, big and small. They do testing for Walmart and uh, a bunch of other really big places. So what they found inside the sample that I sent them is um, the sample contained uh, 447 parts per million of mercury. What that means is, and it's sort of without a baseline, uh, it's just a data point. To give you an idea of sort of what some other generally accepted levels of mercury are, at the federal level, 60 parts per million of soluble mercury is considered a pass. This is a slightly different test. It only tests for total mercury, but I will come back to the solubility in a minute. The federal government does not regulate total mercury in terms of product safety. All right, so even if for some reason you wanted to discount the fact that the manufacturer specifically says not to use it, you could 
try and make the argument that um, the compounds that are in it, the specific kind of compound is called a mercury aryl compound, is not that dangerous. They are generally considered to be the least toxic um, of this particular class of mercury compounds that we use for all kinds of industrial things. But least toxic certainly doesn't mean non-toxic, and it doesn't mean safe. These materials, um, these components, are regulated by OSHA, which is the Occupational Safety uh, Health Administration. And one of the things in the OSHA regulations about it is that the material has what's called a skin rating, which means it could potentially be absorbed through your skin. And there are exposure limits that are set up for people who actually work with this. And they can only be exposed to a certain amount over a course of hours um, in a day. When I spoke to the chemist that ran the test at the testing lab, even though the material passed the solubility test, it doesn't mean uh, that it's safe. That particular test is just one of a host of probably 30 tests that something would need to go through to determine whether or not it's legal for sale. And that's just at the federal level. Individual retailers and states also have their own regulations that govern this sort of thing. So, for example, if you were trying to sell something in Walmart, their threshold is zero. You cannot have any detectable level of mercury in any of their products. And state governments have their own regs, and I will get to those. So the thing that gets sort of thorny is, is it going to kill you, right? No. It, the amount of mercury, even though it's very high in one of these pieces, isn't going to kill you. However, mercury is a material that bioaccumulates. Basically, what that means is it builds up in your system over time, and your body doesn't have a really good way to get rid of it. So there's a lot of different sources of mercury that sort of people are exposed to every day, and adding one uh, needlessly doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, individual states have adopted their own voluntary regulations about the sale of what they call mercury added novelties. Mercury added novelties specifically include as a category toys, figurines, and things for household use. So basically what that means is you can't say, you know, I put 14 plus on the label, it's not for kids, it's a collectible, you know, nobody would ever give this to a kid. All those things are irrelevant in terms of the regulation. So there's 17 states that I could find. Some of the states don't have really great, like, online resources in terms of what their specific EPA regulations are. But basically all the states in New England, um, Connecticut where I live, New York, Vermont, and then like Michigan, Illinois, Ohio, uh, and California are probably the, the biggest ones. And so now if you were to make something using this material, so if you were to take this PT Flex, cast it into a little figurine, and sell it in any of those places, uh, you would technically be breaking the law. Now, are the cops going to show up at your house? Probably not. You know, the worst thing that I can think of probably would be um, you might get fined. So part of these mercury-containing uh, product regulations are also labeling requirements. So the labeling requirements basically mean that you've got to put a big sticker on your product that says, this product contains mercury. Um, this is part of the California Prop 65 legislation and also part of the um, sort of voluntary mercury reduction bans that the New England states and some of the other states that I said also enacted. And so you might say, well, if I put a big label on this thing that says it's got mercury in it, it's going to freak people out. And, you know, it's not going to kill them. So I shouldn't have to do that because I'm going to lose business. And that's really the point. These labeling requirements are meant to be punitive. They are designed to drive people away from your business so that you will use non-mercury alternatives. And that's this is just the way it is. There are non-mercury alternatives that exist, um, which I'll get to in a minute. One of the other important things to know about the regulations at the state level, and these are also regulations that, like I said, are mirrored um, in actually more extreme cases in U the EU and Japan. If you were to say, let's say you lived in California, and there was a piece that was made out of this material in the UK, which 
So it's already, it's a banned substance there for this application. So that person is already sort of running afoul of their, uh, of the regulations that are there. If you, as the person in the U.S., were to then import that piece and sell it, you are considered by the regulations here in the U.S., you are considered to be the manufacturer. So you sort of take on all that liability or potential liability from the state. So the reverse is also true. If I were to make a piece here in the U.S. and send it overseas to have someone sell it for me uh, in the U.K. or uh, in Japan, uh, both are places that have uh, blanket bans on mercury-containing products in this category, I would be exposing those people to liability from there. One of the arguments that I've heard is, uh, you know, that these laws are dumb or they don't apply to you because whatever. Really, Judge Dredd? Unfortunately, we don't get to decide what laws apply to us. So the best course of action is to follow the laws, you know, especially since there are non-mercury alternatives that are available. To address um, some of the alternatives that are available, the two that sort of spring to mind immediately are both made by SmoothOn. The first one is called Task 16. It's an ADA hardness. Fast cast urethane rubber contains no mercury. It is a 1A, 2B mix by weight. So what that means is it's one part A, two parts B, and you have to use a scale. They have another product called Simpact 85, which is an 85A. It's 70 parts A to 100 parts B, which sounds more complicated, but actually isn't. All you do is you take the part B, weight on the scale, um, multiply it by 0.7, and that's how much part A you need to add. They have another product too that is similar. It's called ClearFlex 95, which is a 100A to 150 part B. It's a 95A crystal clear UV stable urethane rubber. Um, it's a longer set, 16 hours, whereas the Simpact and the Task 16 are both about an hour. And it's also a particular type of resin that is, it doesn't have mercury in it, but it is, um, it can cause allergic reactions in certain people. So you need to wear a respirator and sort of handle that with extra care. So certainly if people have questions, um, you can feel free to reach out to me. You can post uh, questions to me on the forum. My name is ImprobableCast. Um, you can shoot me an email. It's A-H-R-E-N at ImprobableCast.com. I guess if you had something emergent, uh, an emergency, you could call me. Uh, my phone number is on my website. The idea behind all this is not to necessarily uh, put anyone out of business, name names, or sort of be an enforcer of, of these rules. The idea is, uh, you know, I want people to be able to make more toys. You know, I want to be able to make toys in a way that is as safe as possible where everyone has all the information that they need and we as a community are conducting ourselves in a way that doesn't expose anyone to potential risks, liabilities, either domestically or certainly, um, you know, partners overseas because that is just common decency. TLDR. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not supposed to read it. You're supposed to watch it. TLDW. Poison. Too long didn't watch Poison. No, Too no, no. Long didn't watch. Now, the, these, okay, well, first off, let's start by saying these are not cast in Polytech. You feel free to go pick these up. Uh, you know, we were, so I can we talk to them and we are sure. Well, that don't need I, any toy. I wouldn't put any hand cast thing in your mouth. Other people touched that. Not only that. It's don't got, put it. It's just chemicals. Like, don't put things in your mouth. Don't put that splash in your mouth. Don't put this mouse in your mouth. No. Do not put in mouth. It's not food. <laughs> um, so, but these are not made out of that material. No. Um, so even though they are looking very rubbery yeah, and very they rubbery. are soft, they, um, are. they are not. Love it. Uh, man, I, they should go to production on these things. Like yes. full production and just do them in, I don't know. These are awesome. Um, so anyway, um, that, there you go. That puts that whole issue, you know, to sleep. We don't need to talk about it anymore. Um, but it is good for both creators and consumers to know this information. And here's the thing. That's all there is to it. We don't and care. And make your own choices. If you want to buy it, buy it. If you want to make it, make it. Uh, yeah, I don't, give a sh I don't give a crap if you feel like making it. But, like, at least don't try and hide what you're doing. 
and don't try and pretend that it's safe when it's technically really not and that's all there is to it like you're a toy buyer and collector Ben. how do you feel about I, do you have an well, opinion on the issue i would be freaked out i would like um i can understand the freak out portion of it because it's like oh great like how many people are producing rubber um toys now and do not give this information um but at the same time i would hope that the people that are producing something for the general public would actually because the company poly Tech. polytech they produce this stuff si- strictly for prototypes. prototypes prototyping and it probably says on the box like do not make this aside from for prototypes and high it, levels it of... probably doesn't say only make prototypes it probably just has a list of the ingredients right so it's a very industrial i would just say that as a producer like i feel responsible that whenever i release a toy i have to i have to have the proper warnings on there i have to have the proper legal and verbiage on there and I you have know to what's tell. In your toy. Yeah, and I have to know what's in my toy, and I have to tell people where it's made, and I have to do everything proper. If somebody doesn't like it, they're not going to buy my toy, and I risk that chance. But I'm not going to like not tell them that. Right. And I think that any producer of toys, whether it's a small run of like ten pieces, or whether it's a large run of a thousand or ten thousand, they you have that responsibility because, God forbid, anything happen to somebody. You will be held responsible, and you yeah, should you be held. That. And you yeah. don't want something to happen to somebody. Yeah. And and when we were sending the the sample of this stuff that we had talked about last time, um, to find out what the mercury content level was on that, uh, we also, uh, you know, because we want our toys to be safe. We before well, we, we already... even yeah before we even you know worked with the factory we we're working with uh, both of them or the couple of the factories we work with all the factories we work with we already know they do not make toys that do not meet uh, any of federal the right. both EU and American for legitimate safety. toy standards like because if you're making a toy and you're bringing it into the country you just can't you have to you even have if to it's a collectible it's still a toy right. yeah so you know but to be certain you know we sent our plastic in as well to get tested ours came back with a zero. <laughs> We have zero mercury in our toys. No mercury in um, October toys. Yay. The other, t- the other toy we sent. I put them in my mouth all the time. I, I wouldn't put them in your mouth still. I don't. Know. I'm just kidding. I still wouldn't do that. <laughs> um, but the other toy had what? Four? It had 447 parts per million. 447 Ooh. parts per million. Now, in America and the EU, I believe the maximum you can have is 60 parts per million. And that's federally. Like Aaron said in the video, places like Walmart and there's like 17 states. You that have to get a zero. It's a zero. Yeah. You have to have zero. So like our it. toy can go into Walmart if we wanted it to. It passes all the rules and regulations um, for all the tests. We had it tested completely across the board. The other one we just tested Mercury. Um, but we had ours tested across the board. They pass everything that they need to go into any store anywhere. Okay. Um, but there'd be seven times the amount. Yeah. The, the other samples are seven times the amount of the legal limit. And the legal limit still should be zero, but it's 60. It's a guideline. So 447 parts per million is a high mercury count. It's, there's nothing. There's no way you can say it's not. It's something to be aware of. It doesn't mean, again, it doesn't mean you're, you're not, not going to die, die if you touch it. You're not, it's not going to kill you. It's just like, be aware of what you're doing. Like, there's mercury in fish when people eat fish. Just, do you need to add more when you don't need to? Like, that's the thing. Right. There's safe but alternatives out there. Choices. Do whatever you want to do. Like Aaron um, said, there's plenty of non-mercury, like this. Look at that, no mercury. Right. So Yay. There you go. Do but what also, you want to do. We don't. I'm not your boss. Do whatever you want to do. I'm not your life boss. <laughs> Who cares? F off. But also, uh, I need to mention real quick. At the end of the video, Aaron did say, uh, "Call him in case of emergency." What he meant was call him in case of resin casting emergency. Uh, do not call him in case of like a chemical emergency. Still call nine one one for that. Or poison control emergency <laughs> yeah. or medical emergency. Uh, you need to you know adhe- check your local safety guidelines. Call nine one one if you have. Also, just don't call him. An actual poison emergency. There's also in the U S. Uh, there's an, a, po- a poison emergency hotline. You can call. It's one eight hundred two 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 one two two two. Uh, just call Aaron if you have a casting ones, emergency. That when we were little, they would give out those yeah. little green, the little green stick, Mr. Yuck stickers. Oh, I don't remember. He was those. like a little like. Like, yeah, and like, don't get under the cover to like. Yeah, the little. You don't remember having the green Mr. Yuck those. stickers? No. Oh, they're awesome. Quick question. One, just a last note. Like, if, let's say, somebody was producing, you know, toys, and they were, like, okay, well, how do I even take the first steps to like even check 
if whether the toys I'm producing or I have somebody producing for me or a factory producing overseas. Well, if you have, if you're producing toys with a factory, you need to get in touch with the factory or go through a producer who has worked with them before. Like this is why I tell people whether you're using October Toys or O'Neill Design, whoever you're using as your your go between your your manufacturer, your people that are project managing your thing. Use people who have made toys before. But aside from who, that, like, who can tell you what the safety standards are and know who their factory is and you have can actually talk to met the, people. You could talk to the factory that you're working with to make your toy and just say, "Hey, I want to get these safety tested," and they can do it in China. They have the, the same factory, the same safety testing labs that are here in the U.S. Also have branches in China, so that you can just have the factory send it right to them. They send you all the data sheets when they're done. It's you, super you simple. All, yeah, it's really if easy. If your factory has a problem with that, or you're, there's often go-between guys, there's like a third-party go-between guy that mm-hmm. people hire off the internet. If they don't give you that information, don't use them. Do They are not reputable. Yeah. Not good. No, and, no. And the only reason we're bringing this up is because there are a lot of hobbyists out there who are wanting to become to, or are claiming to be yeah. toy makers. And it's like, if you want to be a toy maker, or you're on that step, or you're on that process, it's then just path. act legit. Like, be, be as legit as you can the whole time, yeah. and step up your game. If you want to be, if this is what you want to do, and you want to call yourself a toy maker, then be a toy maker, and, and just follow the guidelines, question. follow the rules. Yeah. What if I'm too legit? Uh, too legit you have to, quit. to quit. I think you have to quit. No, or she's no, too legit to quit. You're too legit to quit. I can't quit. Man, I don't know what to do in that point. Get yourself some hammer pants and dance. It's probably going to go. create a temporal pair of socks. I can't not wear these. <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's the information we have. We Done. thought we would share it with you. Make well informed decisions, toy collectors. True and that, go yo. freaking buy these because they're incredible oh and I can't stop looking at them. At my brains. The brains. sculpting on brains. this brains. is brains. so brains. awesome. Brains. 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 All right, so we have some events coming up. Let's do it. All right, right around the corner, BrickCon. You can check out thousands of Lego models on display at the Seattle Center in Seattle, Washington, October 5th and 6th, BrickCon.org, for tickets and more info. Of course, the same weekend, uh, this weekend, yeah. Uh, Baby Tattooville. Join dozens of artists for an exclusive one-of-a-kind weekend at the Mission Inn in Riverside, California, October 4th to 6th. BabyTattooville.com. I'm guessing they're probably sold out. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. No, I think there's a few tickets still left. Probably not this week. Not this week. Because it's in like two days. Should um, show us the stuff you get afterwards. Yeah, bring it over. We'll do a Baby Tattoo. That would be fun. Done. I'll do it. Awesome. Of course, the week after that, New York Comic Con. You can check out the East Coast's biggest pop culture convention at the Javits Center in New York City, October 10th through 13th, NewYorkComicCon.com. Uh, last I checked, I think tickets were sold out, so good luck with that. And last, but again, certainly not least, Zam Paint Class. I'm so jealous that I'm not in Massachusetts at the end of October. Come paint your own Zam figure from Max Toy Company with the pros for a day uh, at Monster Color Studios, October 26th. They're in Middleborough, Massachusetts. The cost for the class is $99. You can go to monstercolorstore.com and I would totally do that. That figure is awesome and I would totally go paint with the Monster Color guys and I think that's so cool and their paint's amazing and kind of jealous. They should, they should come out to Decon and do that there. They should. Hmm. And that's it for episode 279. So much stuff. Yes. Save money with Toy Break coupons online. So many things you can do. <laughs> you could just go to the show notes at toybreak.com for all the details. You can also get links to all the stuff we talk about. Mm-hmm, you can mm-hmm. also uh, watch watch past episodes. You can join the contest and the discussions and the forum. Uh, ask Aaron from Impro- Improbable Cast if you have any casting or molding questions. He's always available on there and tons of great information has already been asked and posted. So check it out. It's, it's a wealth of toy making knowledge. <laughs> uh, you can also support the show by doing what you do every day, which is shopping online. Just click the Amazon link on toybreak.com and uh, do your shopping as normal. That's it. Huge help for the show. We really appreciate that. You can also call and leave us a voicemail at 818 Am I Good? Actually, real quick, can, can I play a quick voicemail? Let's You're do the it. Boss. I am the boss. We're doing it. Voicemail. Voicemail. This is Super Gay Unicorn, and I just wanted to say never stop doing your show. Love it. Bye now. Yay! Oh, why didn't I have this out for that? Bye now. That was great. That just happened. How amazing was that? All right. Love it. Thank you, Super Gay Unicorn. 
Uh, you can also email us info at toybreak.com. You can keep up with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash toybreak. You can check out our toy briefs, our toy girls, and full episodes at youtube.com slash toybreak. You can follow us on Twitter at toybreak. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Aileen Gaspar. <laughs> at George Gaspar. And at 3D Retro on Twitter and at V Goretzky on Instagram. Fantastic. And with that, we bid you adieu. We will see you next week. Same toy time, same toy channel. <laughs> Bye, everyone!